Today's episode is brought to you by our sponsoring partner, the Campaign for Black Male Achievement. CBME is a national membership network that's built a vibrant community of over 5,700 members and more than 2,700 organizations that's been working together over the past decade to build beloved communities across America where black men and boys are healthy, thriving, and enabled to achieve their fullest potential. If you're interested in learning more, hop on over right now to tbpod.com slash partners and consider joining the membership or donating to help them scale the impact of this growing field of black male achievement. You're listening to the trailblazers.fm podcast, where we'll explore the stories of today's successful black professionals, entrepreneurs, and leaders. Join us to access the knowledge, resources, and tools of these accomplished professionals and come away with the know-how, confidence, and motivation you'll need to blaze your trail. And now here's your host, Stephen A. Hart. What's up, Blazer Nation? Welcome to episode 156 of the Trailblazers.fm podcast. We are continuing into our fourth week now of our 2019 Wealth Series. And if you missed the first three episodes, I want to make sure you go back and check out episodes 153, 154, and 155. Some amazing gems there for you to help build wealth in 2019 and beyond. Our featured Trailblazer today is our dear friend, Jamila Safran. Jamila is a podcaster, writer, and founder of a platform called Journey to Launch. Check her out at journeytolaunch.com. She shares her journey to reach financial independence, and she helps many others to do the same. She's a money expert. She walks her talk and helps brave journeyers to gain clarity around their finances and begin to create action plans to reach your goals. In today's episode, we walk through some of the steps that you can begin to take to use money as a tool to reach financial independence. And here's what's up. It's a wealth series and we're talking money. And over the next couple of weeks, I'm going to try something new. We're going to be giving away, we're going to give away some coin to one lucky listener. I'm actually going to give away $100 in cash to one of our Blazing Nation's most loyal listeners. So listen up to how you actually can get your hands on this prize. First step is, and this is very different, right? <laughs> You got to open your favorite podcast app. Could be Apple Podcasts, Google, whatever you listen to, trailblazers.fm on. I want you to open our podcast, open trailblazers.fm on your favorite podcast app. Step one. Step two, I want you to take a fun and creative pic of you listening to trailblazers.fm. Now, here's the thing. I have to see the podcast cover art or the episode graphic in this pic, and I have to see your pearly whites, right? Need to see you smiling, listening to our podcast. And the last step, is that you are going to post your fun and creative pic on social. And in your post captions, you've got to tell your friends to listen to and follow trailblazers.fm. And be sure that, very important here, be sure that you tag us on your post, right? At TBPod or Steve Nehart, right? And use the hashtag, hashtag TBPod, hashtag Mission Field. That's very important because if not, I won't be able to find that post, right? So we want to make sure you're tagging us, you're using that hashtag. Have fun with it. I want to see how creative and fun our Blazing Nation can make this. And I'm going to announce a winner in mid-February. So start taking pics, make some fun social media posts happen about you listening to trailblazers.fm. Multiple entries are allowed and encouraged. That said, guys, get set to receive today's mission fuel from our featured trailblazer, Jamila Safran. Jamila, welcome and thank you so much for being my featured guest today. Wow, go on, Steven. <laughs> What's up, Steven? <laughs> I was going to call it out today. I was waiting because I've been wanting to hear the patwa. <laughs> well, I have faith. In, like, if my family members heard me, they were like, you sound ridiculous, but I still do. No, that sounds really good. It sound a lot better than Kristen. Like, most of my cousins and family members that grew up in the States but are of Jamaican roots, they can understand any degree of pato, but their pato is not always the best. Yeah. And let's be clear, I was born in Jamaica. Yes, you were. 18 months. I yes. Just, I just don't know how to talk it authentically. I, I, try. I, I love the episode where you brought your mom on and I actually learned that on that episode. Oh. That was pretty cool. Yeah. I've been wanting to bring my dad on for some time and that was inspiration to do so. So let me back up. 
I love to start every episode off from a place of gratitude. So I know you have a lot happening, but would love to invite you to share a blessing or opportunity that you're grateful for. Oh, I'm grateful for my family, my wonderful, supportive husband, and my three beautiful, wonderful, energetic children. <laughs> yes, <laughs> that's right. So being born in Jamaica, but grew up in NYC. Mm-hmm. Do you get back to Jamaica much? I did when I was younger. So yeah. it's funny because we didn't talk about this on my episode with my mom, but when I was younger, because she was a working single mom, yeah. she couldn't afford to put me in day camp or summer camp when right. school was out. So she'd send me back to Jamaica back every yeah. summer. It was cheaper to do that. Like she sent money with me, but it was always cheaper to do that option. And it was great because, you know, Absolutely. I had siblings in Jamaica. Exactly. Yeah. Siblings in Jamaica, my father's family. And so I really got to spend more time there. And then since becoming an adult, it's been a little harder to get back, but I really want to make it more of a priority. Yeah, that's something actually that I've been giving thought to. I'm telling my wife, I really need to start taking my daughter Layla home and giving her that exposure in the summertime to her family, to her granddad. And, you know, all my cousins there who also have kids their age. So it'd be good to get an experience for her. But listen, in the last couple of years, you've done so much. Before we talk about all the financial stuff, right? Were you always this girl who kind of watched her coin growing up? Yeah. You know, it's funny because yes, I was. And, you know, back in the day when I first came to the States and seeing my mom work so hard to provide for me, I think I was always mindful of what money was, what it could Mm. provide, the opportunities it could provide. And it really instilled in me a deep sense of appreciation for her hard work and just the opportunities that I wanted in life. Mm-hmm. So I got my first job at 14 and wow. you know I've been working ever since. And you know, it's always like a joke with like Caribbean people and just yeah. like immigrants. Enough job. Like, yeah, especially <laughs> Jamaicans, like you have like a million jobs. So I've yeah. always been a hustler in that regard. And yeah. the thing that my mom always said, because my grandmother always did it. So we didn't necessarily talk about like investing, but it was saving. That was a very important like part mm. in like our lives. It was saving money. So they didn't have much money, but they saved what they could so they could get to a better place. And so yeah. I was always taught from first job that you should save most of what you make. And so my little job that I was saving at 14, and I just continued kind of that like method as I grew up. Mm, that's good. Love that. So the past couple of years, I mean, your story is crazy, right? <laughs> like, yeah. You started a business, journey to launch. The news all across your blog and everywhere I see you pop up in media is you and your husband saved like $170,000 of a two-year span, probably more or less, right? But you had your third child last summer, right? Last spring. Yep, May, last May, 2018. That's right. And you ended your six-figure corporate career to pursue this dream and grow this platform. Lots of change, right? Especially for a young wife and mother. Why were you inspired? Let's talk first about Journey to Launch. Why were you inspired to create Journey to Launch? Yeah, so for me... I always like bring it back to it's like there's a backstory because, you know, there's always like deeper roots in a backstory to like why we do anything we do. Yeah. And so this pull for me to start Journey to Launch initially sprung from the fact that I really got hooked into a lot of podcasts and blogs about reaching financial independence. Mm-hmm. But where that came from was I was pregnant with my first son and I had a horrible commute home. So usually when I was driving, it would take me an hour, hour and a half most to get to and from work. But on this day, it took me like, three or four hours. Like it was hard, but it was not a normal day. And I was pregnant with my first child. And I, I believe I was 31 at the time. And I said to myself, like, I don't want this to be my life. Like I'm, I'm about to be a mom. Like, I don't want to be on the road, like for that long. I don't want to be away and like doing work that like, I don't love, especially if it's going to be away like from my family and my unborn son. And so I remember this goal that I had in my twenties that I've always been ambitious. I've always been someone who said, I'm not going to work for anyone. I don't like having a boss. I've always had that kind of like, that energy. And so I had that feeling in my 20s. And then I got into the workforce, started making more money in my job. And then I tried some things that never worked. And so those dreams kind of slipped away from me. And then at 31 now, having that experience and realizing like that I felt like I was becoming stuck in this like world in which like I didn't feel like my true self, I wasn't bringing my best to the world. I said, I have to figure out a way out. So I started Googling like how to quit your job, like how to retire, how to like, just like live life on your own terms. And I came up upon like a lot of personal finance information about like people retiring early, quote unquote, and reaching financial independence. And this idea that you could craft a life with your finances and use it as a tool to live the life you want. So therefore it kind of like 
spiraled me into like podcasts and reading. And then it inspired me to start my own blog, which Journey to Launch was initially just a blog showing how I would reach financial independence, how my husband and my family, how we would work to do that. Mm -hmm. And then of course, it quickly started to morph into how are you doing that, Jamila? Like, so the way I was sharing it resonated with a lot of people and they wanted to know how I was doing it and kind of like quickly turned into, okay, this is what I'm doing, but here's how you can do it too. Wow. And big picture vision, where is this thing going? Oh, I mean, I view this as a like media company bigger than just like a podcast. Yeah. So for now, like my main source of content is the podcast. Every week you can, a podcast is coming out, right? Every Wednesday morning. Mm -hmm. But at one point, I used to write blog posts. And, you know, I envision this as something where it's delivering content in different forms. So whether Mm -hmm. that's video, podcasts, blogs, courses, content, anything to any resource or tool that can help someone and inspire them and give them like the direction they need to reach financial freedom and packaging it up in a way that's consumable, that's inspirational, that's entertaining. Um, that makes people want to like come back and consume the content. And so for me, that'd be that as a bigger like thing. So I have big, big plans for Journey to Launch. And yeah, I'm excited about it. I love that you're just always on fire and you have, you know, just this push. And then there's an element of you being a mom of three. There's a lot that I shared just a couple of seconds ago, right? You saved all this money. Clearly, parts of saving means that you're sacrificing because you could easily have spent that money doing other things, right? What parts of the sacrifice to save that much in a couple of years were tough? And, you know, what did you guys have to overcome to be able to set that aside? Mindset is a big part of it. So even what you just said just now, sacrifice, I don't, I'm not going to lie and say like everything is easy. And like how I got to this point was just a breeze where, you know, like it wasn't hard work, but I view hard work and sacrifice as like different. So for me, as I shifted my mindset, as I encourage people to shift their mindset around what they need to do to reach their goals. Like it's not necessarily sacrifice, sacrifice, sacrifice alludes to the fact that like you're giving something up that like you would otherwise like really want. But when you look at like the things you're going towards, like your goals, right? So for me, it was, I am not going to be working in this job forever. I'm going to find out a way to escape this job that I wasn't completely happy with. So it didn't feel like a sacrifice to make the changes that I needed to do to reach that goal. It felt like I was investing in Mm. my life and myself. It felt like, you know, it wasn't as treacherous and bleak as it probably seems. And then, you know, and that's why I feel like a lot of people who are first coming upon this, who are first getting like their, the antennas going up and they're interested in this movement in general about increasing just like their know-how, their financial skill and well-being. I think what scares them, it feels like they can't live their life. Like they're going to be miserable on this journey. And my biggest thing is like, you don't have to be miserable because if you Mm -hmm. can replace maybe some of the things that you once did that were inhibiting you from reaching your goals that were roadblocks and you could switch that around to where now you are like creating these things to help you. It won't feel like a sacrifice. You'll feel actually very motivated and encouraged and happy on the path. And so, but in general, yes. Did we have to make changes to do what we did? Of course. But really, I got to be honest, like it didn't feel like it was a sacrifice and something that was too hard because the end goal and what we were working towards was like so much bigger and important for me than whatever it was that I was like dealing with or letting go at the point. I think it's developing a habit too, right? In that change to embrace that, like that mindset piece is almost like a change in behavior about how you kind of handle that money. Because I think back, I shared this a couple of weeks ago, but you know, my mom, wife and I got married. I'd always grown up with a mindset towards, hey, not so much that I spend everything, but I was never a big saver where she grew up as a saver, right? And so even if we come across a big bonus or come across more money, she'd be more apt to just act like it wasn't there and stash it or invest it. And it comes to mindset and behavior, right? In the way you approach that, whether you look at it as a sacrifice or change in that way approaching handling that money, right? Right, right. And, you know, let's be clear. I do think there's a difference between like saving money and then like investing it. So for me, I was good at saving, meaning like, and let's be, I also spent money doing things probably in my twenties I would never do now. So I didn't like make all the perfect like financial decisions, but I don't think I was a good, yeah. While I was a good saver, I wasn't necessarily an investor. I didn't know how to invest. I didn't really understand the value of a 401k. I remember when I first started working and I had my full-time job, I was putting in like, I don't even think I was doing the company match at the point. I was like, I don't care about like, you know, 30 years from now, I'm just trying to like get all my money now. I didn't understand that part of it. But, you know, maybe I was saving some money into a savings account that was earning 0.002%, right? Like, so 
you know, there's levels to like financial literacy and understanding. And so I think, you know, once you understand like, yes, this saving, which is great. It's it's a great start. When we talk about building wealth, like there's another level to it that I think a lot of us don't understand. And and that's what we need to start talking more about. That's right. That's right. Is your husband as entrepreneurial as you are and, you know, or is he your opposite? He is not. And it's actually a good thing. He's not necessarily entrepreneurial. Like he's a teacher. He likes consistency and he's a pretty laid back guy. So for him, even on this money journey, like he really is just, he's okay with trusting me. Like we sit down, we set goals, we have a budget. He has access to like everything. Also, we plan things together and all that. But for the most part, he's pretty laid back. And he's just like, you tell me like, what you want. I tell you what I want. And like, we work on it together, but I'm not going into depth like the way you do, which, you know, it's fine. It works for us. Right. Right. How are you with journey to launch and growing this? Because I want to talk about the financial independence in a second, but as you're bridging into this next chapter with now taking the leap, right. And leaving that corporate job, how are you coping with the fears and the negative emotions that are somewhat a natural part? of life for an entrepreneur and a creator? Yeah, that's a good question because really like it's something that I face every day. So yes, just quit my job and, you know, had my third child and my children are still young. They're four, two and eight months. So it's, you know, like these are not kids almost out the house where I don't have to worry about them. You know, like these are like, we have three kids, we have a mortgage, we have a lot of responsibility. But so there are some days and especially it happened more often when I like just quit and, you know, I saw that, okay, there are no consistent paychecks like anymore coming in, like that feeling of, wow, you know, what did I do? Like, was this the right decision? Because in order for me to quit my job, we had to make changes to our finances. So he talked about us saving all that money, $169,000 in two years. That was my husband and I, we did that together. And a lot of that was in our retirement accounts. And we aggressively did that. But once I realized I didn't want to go back to work, I knew that we had to save up a big cash cushion because my husband's income wouldn't be able to cover all of our expenses. Yeah. And so most people will say, oh, if you have a business, wait for that to be cash positive and replacing some sort of your income. But I literally didn't have that type of time. Like my deadline was after maternity leave, I couldn't handle everything going back to work. And so I just needed this to be a legitimate idea and I needed to see the income sources and I needed you know, proof of concept, which is what I had with the feedback and people and like little things that were happening. But for me, what helped get me through those like negative emotions is having a plan. Mm -hmm. So creating like the worst case scenario, if journey to launch doesn't make money, if my entrepreneurial pursuits don't come to everything I want, what's the worst case, right? Like, so I make money. Right. So back to work. But look, what does that look like? How long do I have? What's my runway? And so what gave myself Mm -hmm. about two years to make this work. And so the worst case scenario is, you know, I'd have to go back to work. So when I have those fears about what did I do? I think about the fact that I would have more regret by not taking this chance at the moment I took it. And mm-hmm. so this chance, this leap of faith, this leap, this bounce, I would say this, like I say bouncing and like, you know, they say the leap and the net will appear. I say bounce and the trampoline, like you'll bounce, like you'll find your bounce wow. because there's an up and down, like leaping, like implies that you're just like leaping and like you fall into a net and that's it. Like the bounce, if you know this as you're working too and have a side hustle, well, almost like a full-time side hustle that there's ups and downs. And so when I'm having those ups and downs, like knowing that the worst case, like I'll survive. And then knowing that the worst case is a lot of people's everyday life. Like I realize that I'll be okay. So that helps me through it. And, but I do want to be clear that I still have those emotions. So it's not like everything's like, Oh, it's all great. Like I'm totally confident. No, I have fears. I just push through them anyway. I just do it anyway. I think that's natural. That comes with the doubts and the fear and the not knowing, you know, what comes next with the security of a corporate job. Security in a corporate job is even <laughs> sketchy right now, right? So, but I appreciate you sharing that. A lot of the listeners of the podcast are also entrepreneurs. So while we're talking about wealth, I also, you know, found that your journey is applicable to many of the listeners on the podcast as well. You talk a lot about financial independence on your platform. Wanted to kind of flip gears and talk a bit about that. But what is financial independence? Maybe let's start there. Yeah. So financial independence, it can mean a lot of things. But for this context, we're going to talk about it means where you are financially secure to the point where your investments, your savings, your assets are able to provide you an income, a cushion in which you can live off of comfortably and you wouldn't have to actively work 
for money if you didn't want to. So it doesn't mean that you don't work. It just means you have the option to choose what you want to do for work because you're in a position where you're financially secure and you have saved up enough or you invested enough money or you have enough passive income or active income if you're an entrepreneur to help you pay for expenses and live your life. Yeah. We talked a little bit about mindset and behaviors earlier, but why is that vital to kind of playing into this whole piece about reaching financial independence? You know, there's a lot at play in the world. And it's funny because if you probably remember what you like doing as a child or a kid, like I feel like that's when we're like the most ourselves, probably when we're obviously just born. And as we're children, because the world is like our oyster, hopefully, if you were lucky enough to have parents that encouraged you or had a positive environment that hopefully you felt that way as a child. In that sense, like you thought that you could accomplish anything. And I think as we get older, as we walk into this world, there are a lot of things and people telling us what we can and can't do. There are a lot of limitations set upon us, especially for people of color. And there are, there are a lot of external factors that we need to deal with. And so I think the concept of financial independence, like this point that you can use money as a tool to like live the life you want instead of money, like using you and Mm -hmm. you feeling like you're not in control is a concept that for a lot of people, that's almost like foreign. Like you kind of want that. You think it's possible, but then when you think about, wait, I have all the student loan debt. I have all like this mindset and cultural or just social economic like things going on. Like, how am I going to reach that? And so the first step and the reason why mindset is so important is because that shift that believing in yourself that one, you have the right to reach this and two, that you can, like it's possible for you is a big shift for people because I think some people don't even think it's possible. Some people don't even know about it. I mean, I didn't know that this was possible. I thought when I was thinking about it in my 20s, I was going to work for anyone. The only way I thought I could do that was by winning the lottery, marrying rich, or possibly like creating this huge, huge, like big company, right? And so I didn't know that there were like average working people making money, just saving and investing. And then they were able to quit their corporate jobs or retire early and take part-time jobs or just take jobs they loved because they had their finances so in order. I didn't know that that was possible. So I think one, people don't even know it's possible. So like that mindset part is like knowing it's possible, believing you can do it. And then that at least like gives you that fire to figure things out. Yeah, yeah. So talk me through some steps, right? What are the key steps to beginning to use our money as tools to reach that financial independence that we talk about? So, you know, I want to say that I also understand why for some people, this whole concept of being financially independent and retiring early is so far off because so many people are starting at a deficit, Yeah, meaning they have like a lot of debt. They have a lot of student loan debt, they have mindset issues, they have income issue, right? They don't Mm -hmm. feel like they make enough to like support the lifestyle they want. So the first step, After believing you can do it and understanding what it is, is to really take stock of where you are. So where are you with your finances? Being real with yourself about that. So how much debt are you in? What's your income? What's your assets? What's your liabilities? Is really taking inventory of that because at least when you know what that is, you can start making some changes to where you want to go. And then it's important to know where you want to go. So like, what does being financially independent mean for you? So for some people, that means saving up X amount of money, like in their investment accounts and retirement accounts. It could be a million dollars. It could be $500,000. Like that's a big number that kind of scares some people, depending on how far off they are from that. Some people, it means they want to start a business and buy real estate that spins off passive income. So it's also deciding what financial independence looks like for you. And then like creating a plan to get from where you currently are to there. And then understanding that depending on where you're starting, that journey might take a long time. It might have a lot of ups and downs, but at least you have an idea where you are, where you want to go. Um, that's the biggest thing I tell people. It's like, where are you now and where you want to go? Those are the two biggest points or like check-ins you should understand. And then you can create a plan on how you're going to reach that goal. Right. And so to your journey is, right? Like what are some strategies that you share with your clients, with your base, with your community and tribe to begin to reduce debt, to begin to save and invest? Education is important in terms of just understanding concepts and you don't need to know like everything. You don't have to memorize things like it's a test, right? That's what Google is for, but just basic understanding. And I'd say this, like, so income is the driving factor to reaching your goals and reaching wealth. So there's two sides of the equation. There's income and expenses. Mm -hmm. So, you know, income minus your expenses gives you like some sort of cushion, hopefully that you can then use to reach your goals. And so you can look at your expenses and that's where a lot of people in personal finance start. And it's a good place to start. So looking at what you're spending, especially if you're living paycheck to paycheck or you find that you can't cover your bills because a lot of people are spending without thinking or spending on things that don't matter. So taking a stock on like what you're spending and possibly cutting back or being more mindful about it helps a lot. 
Mm-hmm. And the area that I like focusing on and I'm going to be focusing on more in my content is how do you increase your income? So whether that's your nine to five, whether that's through side hustling, whether that's through entrepreneurship, because, you know, quite honestly, like when you hear how much my husband and I save, like it's a big number, but that's because we work our way up to like earning more money like through our 20s and in our 30s. And so the reason we were able to save that much is because we were earning good income. And Mm -hmm. so I think for a lot of people, it's looking at ways in which they can increase their income that can help really push them forward towards their goal. And then like realizing that they have to apply that money, that extra money, quote unquote, to their goals, not like maybe a depreciating asset, like a nice car. And again, there's nothing wrong with a nice car. But if your goal is to reach financial independence or you have debt, then the next step in your journey might not be to get a nice car. It might be, okay. I'm going to focus on paying this credit card off. I'm going to focus on putting more to my 401k and so on and so on. Mm -hmm. Yeah, that's real. That's important to being able to reach a goal. For entrepreneurs, for entrepreneurial parents like you listening, right? Any additional advice on, you know, dealing with the goals of wanting to manage the expenses, but also you touched on this a bit earlier, but, you know, this income piece, right? Income isn't always a steady eddy, right? When you're running your own business. So any tips to entrepreneurs on taking care of growing that side of the wheel, especially too, because I mean, you don't really have, you have some vehicles to save, but I don't think it's like a 401k where there's a match and, you know, all that for an entrepreneur. So there has to be some more discipline on that side, right? Yeah. And I mean, there are ways to save like as an independent contractor. So if you, you know, you can still open up a Roth IRA, there okay. are, or as an independent contractor, you can open up a pre-tax retirement account also, right? Like an independent like IRA or retirement account. So that is possible for you. I think a lot of people just don't know about it. But in general, it's important to still prioritize. So, you know, even when it comes to like spending money and earning money as an entrepreneur, it's more of, okay, where are my best efforts and where can I make more money, Mm. right? Like where's my time best spent? Where can I invest where there will be a payoff? I think some people get bogged down with the idea that investing is only like in the markets or in real estate, but there's an investment in yourself and your knowledge, right? That like allows you to make more money too. And so that's really important for especially entrepreneurs. And I think also that doesn't also mean you like you spend without care and you're like, okay, I'm just going to buy this $15,000 like coaching program when you're not like at that level or ready for that, right? You still have to be mindful of where you are. Again, prioritizing. And I like the saying, like you can afford anything, but you can't afford everything. Mm. So this is personal and business where There are a lot of things we all want, right? I want to take more trips. I want to go out to eat more without looking at like how much it costs for the meal, right? Like there's a lot of things that I want, but when I look at the priorities in my life, I think about, okay, it's a season in my life where that's not going to happen right now, but it will. And Mm -hmm. so for now, I'm going to focus on this for this return. And so, you know, it comes down to like that give and take and that delayed gratification, but still enjoying your life now. Yeah. Living a certain way today so you can enjoy tomorrow. Right. Jay, I love this. I could keep talking to you for a good bit more, but I can't let you off without asking you about resources. So what kind of books, what are some books that we can be reading to help us get better at taking care of the money bag this year? Yeah. So, you know, a good book that, I mean, a lot of people, this was considered the original book or guide to financial independence is something called Your Money or Your Life by Vicki Robin and Joe Dominguez. Um, They actually came out with a new updated version in 2018. So that's a book I recommend to everyone. A lot of people cite that as a book that like years ago was the start of like the financial independence movement, or at least brought it to the mainstream. Like it was on Oprah at one point when Oprah had her show. So I'd say that that's a really good book. There are actually like a lot of cool books on financial independence coming out this year that I actually would recommend people to like check out. Um, So one is called Financial Freedom by Grant Sabatier. I actually just interviewed him and he, his book is coming out in February. So perfect timing. And it's all about like what financial freedom is and the steps to get there. There's another one by Tanya from Our Next Life. She has one called Work Optional. So she's talking also about financial freedom, but how to make work optional. So those are newer books and there are resources like that, which I think like are a great place to start in terms of books. Wow. Jamila, listen, I'm so grateful to you giving me some time. Really excited to finally have you on. It's been way overdue. Last question of the night. What's one action that our trailblazers that have been listening to us and hopping off this call can put into action this week that's going to help them to blaze their trail? Right. Well, thank you for having me on, Stephen. It's been an honor to be on your show. And so I'd say for trailblazers listening, I would also say give yourself grace. So 
you know, depending on where you are when you hear this and you have like some great content this month coming out around this, like depending on where you are, like give yourself grace because a lot of things that we did not know. Our parents Mm -hmm. didn't know to teach us. Like we didn't know, but that's the past. And so now we have the control. We have the power to change our lives. And so one, I want people to believe that it's possible. Freedom is possible for them. And the other thing I want them to understand is that the journey may be long depending on where you start, but every step along the journey matters. So whether that means you're in debt payoff mode or you're learning about investing or you are just even waking up to this idea, like every step forward is a good step in a better direction. It gives you more options. And something that they can do like right away is to immerse themselves in content and inspiration to help them on their journey. I remember when I first started, like I became obsessed with podcasts and blogs Because I was just like, how are people doing this? What does this mean? And, you know, you'll hear different stories. You'll find different voices. You'll find what resonates with you. But I really think it's like, follow your intuition. Mm -hmm. So if there's something that piques your interest, Google it, like read through it, like listen to the podcast, like just follow that because it leads you down a rabbit hole and you'd be happy that you fell in. So just continue to follow that. Before I let you go, tell us how we can stay connected to you and what you have happening right now. Sure. So... I have a podcast, Journey to Launch. So wherever you're listening to this podcast, you can find my podcast, Journey to Launch. I also have my website where you can listen to it, journeytolaunch.com. And I'm on all social media as Journey to Launch. So I love connecting with people. And then once you connect with me, you become a journeyer. Like there's no debate. You're a journeyer now. That means you're on this journey with me. So at Journey to Launch on Instagram, Twitter, or Facebook. And then most importantly, I'm really excited about my new membership community. So this is a place where if you are ready to take your finances to the next level, come join us in this membership community where we're giving resources, tools, classes, content for you to reach your financial goals. And you can find that at journeytolaunch.com slash launch club. Love it. Love it. And I'll make sure I post all these links up in our show notes page over at tdpod.com. Thank you so much, Jay. Thank you so much. I'm Steve Nehart, and you've been listening to the Trailblazers.fm podcast. If you're not yet doing so, consider following Trailblazers.fm on Twitter, Instagram, and Facebook, and feel free to connect with me over on LinkedIn. Whenever you're posting stories or social media posts about Trailblazers.fm, be sure to use the hashtag TBPod and hashtag Mission Fuel. We'll be able to see you and I'll be able to show some love. And in case you're not aware, our show notes for all our episodes can be found on our website over at TBPod.com. Now, if today was your first time listening, I just want to say big ups, enough respect for checking us out. You've made this Jamaican guy really happy that you're here with us today. And I'd love your help with keeping this black excellence flowing each and every week. So if you haven't yet subscribed, hop on over to Apple Podcasts, Spotify, or wherever you listen to podcasts. Search trailblazers.fm and subscribe, rate, and review us there. Be sure to browse through some of our past episodes. There are more than 150 published episodes now. And a little something is out there for everyone to help keep the knowledge flowing. We grow when you, as part of our Blazer Nation community, shares and invites your friends and family to listen to an episode you think might impact them most. We believe that someone listening to these inspiring stories are going to be moved to make significant changes that have generational impact for many others, both now and well into the future. Don't miss next week's episode. New episodes are released each and every Monday morning at 5 a.m. Eastern. Blaze the Nation, go out today and find a way to rise above, go way beyond, and keep blazing your trail.